Hi, I'm Steven. Um, Steven. I saw a lot of points with your argument that we could spend like four hours on talking about. Oh, no, 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 no. We could spend four years talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun of this stuff, yeah. man. Well, the main big two I saw was with your second argument of why God exists. So your um, self-terminating statement or whatever it was that you said, where something contradicts itself, okay. uh, you derive that from the law of non-contradiction. Right. Which, for everyone who doesn't know, this is a formal law of logic which says that a subject S cannot both be a predicate P and not P. Okay? That's the formal definition. So, you said in your argument, um, God created everything from nothing. He created the universe from nothing. Space, right. matter, and time. The space-time continuum. He didn't create himself. You know, he was already, he already, he was already there. So yeah. does that mean that there wasn't nothing? There was nothing. There was no nothing made of space, matter, or time. Yes, he existed, but not the universe. Not not physical stuff. Not physical stuff. Right. Okay. Um. Here you go with that. The second main point is kind of what went on uh, with the guy before me. You said that the Big Bang was the beginning of the universe, and yes. every beginning has to have a beginner. Yes. Um, I got two things with that. One, that is a informal fallacy. Uh, it is a false cause, saying that just because event A happens before event B, event A is the cause of event B. Oh, sure, yeah. Just because something precedes an event doesn't mean that the thing preceding it caused it. Right. For example, uh, the rooster crows before the sun comes up, but the rooster crowing doesn't cause the sun to come up. Exactly. Exactly, I agree with you. So God existing, right, being an immaterial essence, is not a, a conclusive reason of why the Big Bang began. Well, here's what we have to do. We have to look at the evidence and then reason from effect to cause. So we look at the evidence... You induce. Yes, of course. You're making your, your inference to the best explanation. Right. So you see, let me just finish here. So, so because we covered this really last night, I just went over it briefly tonight. If space, matter, and time had a beginning, then the cause of space, matter, and time can't be made of space, matter, and time. The cause must be spaceless, timeless, and immaterial. And also must be powerful to create the universe out of nothing. Must be personal in order to choose to create must be intelligent in order to create the universe with such precision. Now you have a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, intelligent, personal, powerful cause. Now, as Thomas Aquinas would say, who lived about in the 1200s, he says, all men know that to be God. If you want to call it something else, you can. But that's what we mean by God. A spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, personal Creator who sustains the universe, an intelligent being as well. Okay, um, my thing about that would be another informal fallacy of ignorance, saying you're trying to prove something you don't know based on what you don't know. Okay, this is not a, this is not a God of the gaps argument. No, God exists, so you can't for a fact conclude that He started the Big Bang. Well, it it we're, we're again we're reasoning from effect to cause. It's not a God of the gaps argument. Let me explain what, what happened previously at the University of Michigan. I may explain this last night. But at the University of Michigan, an atheist thought that my argument, the cosmological argument that I gave, was a God of the gaps argument. He said this. He said, Frank, this is a God of the gaps argument. You're plugging God into the gap in your knowledge. Just because we haven't found a natural cause for the universe yet, you're assuming it's God. That's basically what you're saying now. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Here's what I said to him. I said, John, you will never find a natural cause for all of nature. Why? Because nature itself was created, so nature can't be the cause. I said to him, also, I mean, he's saying, give science more time and we'll find a natural cause for all of nature. I said, John, that sounds a lot like faith to me. Right? You haven't found it yet, but I have faith that I will find it. That's what he was saying. And I said to him, you'll never find a natural cause for all of nature. To say so would be like me saying, if you just give me more time, one day I'm going to find out that I gave birth to my own mother. It's impossible. Because I came from my mother. I couldn't have, I couldn't have caused my mother. The same thing is true with nature. Nature came from the cause of nature, so nature can't be the cause of nature. 
And whatever caused nature has to be spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, intelligent, and personal. Based upon the evidence. In other words, we're going from effect to cause. We see the effects, so the cause, that's how we know what the cause is. Now, I'm not saying that this argument proves the Christian God is true. What I'm saying is this proves a being consistent with the Christian God is true. You need to go further to see if Jesus really is who he said he was to make the connection that the God who created the universe is the same God that rose Jesus from the dead. Right. Okay. Um, I could go with that, which moves on to my second point with that argument, which is there is nothing in science that conclusively says the Big Bang was the beginning of time. Actually, there is partial evidence, nothing conclusive, but partial, that says there was something before the Big Bang. Moreover than that, there is nothing that says the universe is finite, meaning that the Big Bang, where everything came from a singular point smaller than infinity, is still infinity. Something, if, if the universe is infinite, and it came from a point smaller than infinity, it is still infinite. You cannot reduce infinity. Okay, well, what you're, what you're referring to is what's called the singularity. Yes, the singularity. Which is a point of infinite density. Yeah, um, I'm referring to this as the beginning of the universe, as you called it. Right. Which is really just our observable universe condensed into a very small point. We, but, like I said, there's partial evidence that says there was something before the Big Bang. What, what, is that evidence, what is that evidence that there was something before the Big Bang? Because the universe is hypothesized to be infinite because we cannot prove it's finite. Now, we know that, that space, matter, and time are finite. Here's one reason right here. I just went through oh, that. Time must be right. finite, otherwise so, today never would have gotten here. That's the same argument as saying, if I need to walk a meter, I first need to walk half a meter. But for me to walk half a meter, I need to walk a fourth of a meter. For me to walk a fourth of a meter, I need to walk an eighth of a meter. For me to walk an eighth of a meter, I need to You're talking meter. about Zeno's paradox so here. Yes, yep. exactly. But that's if, what you're doing. Here. No, 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 no. That's not what's going on here, Stephen. Zeno's paradox deals with abstracts. We're dealing with concretes. Okay? The universe is not concrete. And neither is time. The universe is not concrete? No, it's not. What do you mean by that? You mean it's, 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 a, it's a part of our imagination? No, it's not completely concrete, and neither is time. The universe and time, as you should know, are consistent with one thing. You know, what? Space, space and time. Yeah, the, 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 the theory of general relativity shows that space, matter, and time are co-relative, that they came into existence together. Even Einstein, this is what Einstein proved through general relativity. So space, matter, and time came into existence out of nothing. But he proved through general relativity that um, Objects affected by gravity, which is a curvature in space time, follow a geodesic along that curve. Yeah, but that's the, the implication, though, if you go back, is that space, matter, and time had a beginning. That's why Einstein tried to put a fudge factor into his equations to avoid an absolute beginning, and he later repented of that fudge factor because Hubble showed him the expanding universe. See, Einstein wanted a static eternal universe. And his original general relativity equations were showing an expanding universe, which would have implied a beginning. He didn't like that, so he put a fudge factor into his equations. He later said it was the greatest mistake of his life. Right. So it had a beginning. An expanding universe doesn't have to have a beginning if it's infinite. What well, that's the very question. What do you mean by infinite? Yeah, exactly. What is the beginning of infinite? You would have to then There is no beginning to infinite. infinite. That's the point. But the right. universe had a beginning. Infinity. Which means the universe is not infinite. That's no, the point. It is, though. Why do you say that? Because Whatever is the evidence. You can't prove that it isn't. That's what the evidence shows, Stephen. No, that's not. the whole point. That's what the philosophical evidence shows. That's what you were, were you here last night? No. Well, there. The informal fallacy of ignorance, throwing something you don't know with something Steve, you don't Stephen, know. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. <laughs> this is not a God of the Gaps argument. It, I'm, not, this, I'm not talking about God of the Gaps anymore. That, You're well, saying that the universe is infinite, yeah, you can't point. say it's not. Well, you need, to, you, you need to provide evidence that it's infinite. You need to refute no, this argument. No, I'm saying that we don't know whether it's infinite or not, so you can't make a no, conclusion. No, we, we do know. We, that's why Stephen Hawking said almost everyone now believes that, that believes. the universe and time itself had a beginning. Well, of course, everything's a belief. It doesn't mean it's not true. You have a belief that the universe is infinite. I have a belief it's not. One of those beliefs is true and the other is false, correct? Right. Okay, right. Hawking is saying everyone, almost everyone now believes that. That's what uh, that's what uh, Valenkin says too. He says the proof is now in place. 
there, there's no proof to saying there was a beginning. But there's partial evidence saying there was a beginning. There's partial evidence saying there was a beginning. Right, Steve, you, you need to read up on the evidence. Because this isn't me evidence. saying this. I know very well. Stephen, this is not me saying this. This is Alexander Valenkin, a cosmologist from Tufts University, who went to Stephen Hawking's 70th birthday party two years ago and said in a, in a formal presentation, all the evidence we have shows the, the universe had a beginning. And he's an agnostic. Who says we have all the evidence? The evidence that we have now. Right. Okay. Which is not conclusive. Oh, well, he says it's a proof. So you can take it up with him. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Well, and I think this evidence right here is, is irrefutable. There is no way that you can say that time did not have a beginning. Because if it didn't have a beginning, we wouldn't be standing here right now.